Pad Love with Pat's Two Cents. A continuation on that thought, Haggai chapter 2, verse 13. I'm going right to the bullseye on this one because we're going to talk about a little something, something. Then Haggai, then said Haggai, if one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these, shall it be clean? And the priest answered and said, it shall be unclean. All right. So we've already dealt with sanitize and clean and purify compared to contaminated, dirty, and infected. Okay. Now, here's the thing. You can have sanitized hands, sanitized gloves. You can do all of that. But if you touch something that has not been sanitized, you have transferred the contaminants onto your glove or onto your hand. And whatever you touch from that point on passes on the contamination. You get what I'm saying now? Whether it's cold germs, flu bacteria, whether it's hepatitis, whether it's uh, whatever. Okay. So you think about it like this. Think of the germs, the contaminants, as sin, sinfulness. Now, here you are trying to handle something with your holy hands. You're living a holy life. You're doing right. You're doing everything according to what you understand, according to what you've learned in the Word. You're praying. You're seeking God. All that, thank God, that's a blessing. But some of you, are trying so hard to get others into the kingdom that you are mingling your holiness with contaminants, thinking you're going to win them over. You, well, what are you talking about? The Lord says we're supposed to uh, win the loss and 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 uh, you know go out in all the world and yeah 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 we, yeah we got that. But see, there's a method to the madness too. You can't just haphazardly approach this thing. See, this is where a lot of churches, choirs, youth ministers, a lot of people go wrong trying to do right. You take on the ways of the world. You take on the language. Some of you will even use the language. Why? You want to relate. You want them to relate to you. But you know what the world is looking for? The world is looking for something different, set apart, holy. They may resent you for it, but boy, when they want to see it, they want to see it in you. They don't want you acting like them. They got enough of that. They can find that on the nearest street corner. You ought to let your light so shine, not blend in with the darkness. What are you doing? You cussing like a sailor so you can feel, make them feel comfortable? No, guess what? When it comes to Jesus Christ and his ways, he makes everyone feel uncomfortable who is not interested in the things of God. That's why they call him a rock of offense. People stumble over him. They trip over him because he stands for something and there is no bending in his standard. But those of you who want to be pliable, you want to be holy when it comes to the things of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And oh, blessed be the name of the Lord most high. But then when you get with your, with your homies and your buddies and the people on your job, it's like MF this and, and, and F that. And, you know, I, ooh. And you're talking dirty jokes and you make making little innuendos and taking a sip and taking a puff and cause you want them to feel comfortable around you. Oh, stop. All you're doing is contaminating your walk. 
If you want to have an effect on them, don't touch the unclean thing. Leave it alone. Stand out like a sore thumb. Be courageous enough to stand out like a sore thumb. When they wonder why you won't get drunk with them and why you won't go to the parties with them and why you won't get high, just a little snort, no big deal. You going through stuff too. Come on, chill out with them. Guess what? You stand for God no matter what. You want to make a difference in somebody's life, you be different. Have the balls to be different for God. All this little half-stepping, the world is sick of that. And God sure is nauseated by it. So you have to decide, who do you represent? Now, if you're not representing, you need to sit your behind down and quit calling, claiming the name of Christ till you get your act together. I sound so angry and I'm not. I get emphatic about that. I was 27 years old when I gave my heart to the Lord, you guys. And the only thing that took me so long was remembering how so many born again Christians trying to get me in the church would cuss me out in a New York minute if something went off. And I'm like, wait a minute. I thought you were a child of God. And that took me the longest. I couldn't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do the math on it. It would not compute. How could you claim and act like, come on? That whole thing must be a bunch of bull. And it took me a while to come to grips with the fact that I needed to find out for myself and not go by how they acted. Because if I continued to go by how they acted, I would not be saved today. How many of you? or a hindrance to others giving their heart to the Lord? That's a question. We all have to ask ourselves that because none of us do it perfectly, but we should at least be trying. 